So here I'm showing now, this is an example of an Azure Logic app. Uh, so it is a serverless workflow in the cloud. It's event driven, there's no servers, uh, it's consumption, micro billing, pricing. Um, but what's great about this is that now, you know, you're writing these serverless solutions, oftentimes you have these little bits of code that do some great things, but you need to orchestrate them together. Uh, and often, more importantly too, you also need to connect to other systems or services. You want to process data that's coming from some source that may not have a direct binding or an easy access point. So Logic Apps provides this visual designer for you to set up those triggers and actions. You can see here on this designer, I'm, whenever someone uploads a CSV file into an FTP server, that's firing off the serverless app, calling a few Azure functions, putting some stuff into storage, sending an email with Gmail, I think you get the idea. Uh, so this is very powerful orchestration for you uh, to process your uh, serverless apps together, whether you're orchestrating functions or other APIs, uh, really any accessible at, uh, web endpoint. Uh, what really makes Logic Apps great though is the number of out-of-the-box connectors that are provided. Uh, so I think I have on this next slide, yeah, this is a, you gotta squint really hard to read all of this. I'm not expecting anyone to but this is a list, it's probably out of date as of this morning, of the number of out-of-the-box connectors that are provided. Uh, John mentioned it ranges from you know, Google Docs, Google Drive, to Office 365, uh, all the way to things like an on-premises file system. So you can trigger a serverless application when you, drop a fold, when you drop a file in a folder on your machine. So like on this laptop, I could drop a text file, which would go fire off this logic app, could go process it with some Azure functions, and stick it into Slack or whatever I want to do with it. So this really, again, with our purpose here in Microsoft Azure, we want to enable and empower developers to be able to do and accomplish more. And we feel that Logic Apps is a very important piece in that to say, hey, I need to go pull some data from Salesforce. I'm much faster to just say, go talk to Salesforce instead of going and figure out, well, how do I authenticate with Salesforce? What do I do to get an access token? That's all taken care of seamlessly uh, for you with the service. So this is kind of just a visualization of what a Logic App may look like. Um, you'll see here you can orchestrate things on the right hand side of this slide, which could be a SQL database, uh, maybe Office 365, DocuSign. Uh, but the part that really gets me excited uh, that I see a lot of developers take their serverless apps to the next level is actually the stuff on the left side, um, which is the other offerings available to you in the cloud. Things like cognitive services to do artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, injecting that into your applications is very powerful, and I'm going to show you that in just a second. And again, uh, we also provide access via an on-premises data gateway. Uh, so I know, you know, you're like serverless, what are we doing talking about on-premises data? But it's very possible that there is some data on-premises somewhere that you want to be able to process in a serverless fashion, and the tools are there for you if that's what you want to do. So that's enough talk, let's see this in action now. Uh, let's come over here to our uh, wonderful desktop world that uh, Yohai has set up for us. And here, I have now on my screen, let me make sure that we're good with uh, Wi-Fi. This is the Azure portal again, and now we're looking at the Azure Logic Apps Designer. Now this is a visual designer. You can build and orchestrate your serverless apps without having to write the code, but we do expect that there is some code you're gonna want to have as a part of these workflows, and that's where the Parents with Azure Functions comes in great handy. Uh, so what I actually want to do is I want to build something a little bit fun here. I've noticed uh, over the, as we've gone throughout the morning, that there's been a lot of tweets happening around serverless conference. So I actually want to connect to a data source, in this case Twitter, and I'm going to process all of the tweets that are happening with the word serverless in it. Now, don't tweet until I save this thing, but if you tweet after I click save, you'll be able to see those tweets get processed in real time. But before I even do that, I know I showed that beautiful slide before with all those things. It is just worth calling out again here. These are the number of services you'll, you hopefully will recognize many of these icons that you can just connect your serverless apps to very easily. Uh, and there's some great stuff here like computer vision API to look at an image and detect what's in the image, uh, emotions of faces, uh, speech detection. Uh, we have Oracle here. Whatever you need to talk to, there's a good chance there's a connector. So in this case, we will say, I want to trigger this workflow uh, whenever a new tweet is posted. So I'm gonna go ahead here and say that's the trigger that I wanna use, and now it just wants to know my search term, and I'll just say serverless. Uh, and in this case, I do have to check Twitter on some interval, because they don't have some webhook mechanism just yet. 
so in this case, now I'm going to fire this thing off whenever a new tweet is posted. And now I want to start processing it. And I've written a few Azure functions that I'll call into in just a moment. You'll notice I can start adding functions in as steps. But before I do that, I do want to inject some intelligence into this workflow. So I'm actually going to add here one of the Azure Cognitive Services, which are these little bite-sized APIs that anyone can access to do all of the things that power like our bots or Cortana or all of the machine learning stuff. You'll notice here with like text analytics, I can do things like detect the sentiment of the tweet. And very easily, I haven't had to write any code yet. I haven't had to go and figure out how to authenticate or use these APIs. I'm now just saying, hey, what's the text that I want to analyze with this service? And I can pass in data from my other calls as well. So I want to grab the tweet text, whatever someone's tweeting about serverless. I want to detect it with some sentiment analysis. Maybe I want to do one other thing where I'm going to pull out the key phrases. So that hopefully gives you an idea of how uh, fast you can start connecting to these different services. Now I do want to run some of my own code as well. Maybe based on the score, I want to do some custom mapping or configuration of the tweet. So I'm actually going to add a parallel step here. And I'm going to call an Azure function. And what's fantastic is now I have some custom code running. I won't open it for you, but it's very simple. It's, uh, so how the cognitive service text analytics service works is there's a score between 0 and 1. One is like the most positive tweet in the world. If somebody tweeted something like, wow, Jeff is such an incredible presenter, this is such an inspiring uh, presentation, that would get pretty close to a one. If you tweeted something like a zero, like all the other presentations are terrible compared to Jeff. Uh, I actually don't know, is that positive? Or uh, you'll have to test that one out. Uh, but anyway, that would get close to a zero, okay? Did you delete tweets you don't like? Uh, <laughs> have like uh, the tweets coming in, I just remove them automatically. We'll see, let's find out. Uh, no, unfortunately not. Uh, but what's great here is that I actually, when I click, I want to add an Azure function. This looks at my subscription and knows the functions that I've written or I have access to. And that's actually created almost like this library of functions across all of the Azure regions that I might be deploying functions in. And I can call these as a step within any of these workflows. So I have this function which sets the score tier. So it kind of categorizes it. Is this red, yellow, or green based on the score? And I say, yeah, that's the one I want to call. And what's the content I want to pass in? Let's pass in that score from Cognitive Services. And just to kind of <coughs> wrap things up, we'll come over here to this parallel branch and we'll add a function that pulls out some of the key phrases and can do some stuff with the key phrases for us. So let me type that in quickly here. Serverless conf, let's get those key phrases. In this case, I'll pass in a, a JSON object with some key phrases. <coughs> yeah. There we go. Now for the grand finale, because we do want to be able to visualize this somehow. I do want to publish this into some form so that we can see the tweets that are happening. So one of the connectors that we have out of the box is actually for Microsoft Power BI, which enables you to do these visual uh, dashboards for any data source. So I'm actually going to take all this tweet data and I want to publish it to a real-time dashboard so we can see these tweets in real time. Again, just one other thing I'll show you in terms of we want to make it very simple for any developer to build these serverless orchestrations and connect them with services. You'll notice here that because I've authenticated with my account, hopefully this one works, uh, it's actually looking at my Power BI subscription and it knows the different data sets that I have available. It knows the different tables that are available. So I haven't had to go and pull out like the GUIDs, it's the actual integration code here. I just say, hey, I want to push to this serverless live dashboard. And the designer's automatically gone, and you'll notice it's actually listing for me right now. Here's the different columns that are available in this table for me. So it's just so easy for me to stream all of this data from my different sources and my function apps into very powerful end-to-end -end solutions. So let's grab where the, what the tweet is, who's tweeting it, where they're tweeting from, when they created it. Um, what their score was on how positive or negative the tweet was. Let's get the key phrases from that key phrases function. And let's get the category from that score tier. Okay, that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save here, and I'm done. Started tweeting. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Once, there you go, it's running now. Uh, so I'll actually go ahead, and this is now listening to Twitter for all those tweets. This is one that's been running all day. Um, so this is the serverless conf uh, tweets. You'll notice actually you can see in this dashboard this is right when the keynote started. This was during the breakfast while you guys were all eating and not as much tweets. But you can see very, very strongly on this when the keynote started, 
Uh, you can see the different tweets as they're coming in. You can see the sentiment scores. If I come over to this one that we just published, um, if you guys are tweeting, um, there we go. So we're starting to see some stuff come in. Too negative? What is this? <laughs> what are these negative tweets? Uh, so I can actually see, there we go, there's a one. So who's this point nine eight? Here, let's give the plug to S-K-I-R, whatever, screen card. This person is the best, because they're writing about great job, logic app, serverless comp, thank you, okay? Anyway, but even, so you watched me build that from scratch. Obviously there were about 40 lines of Azure Functions I didn't show you, but hopefully you get the idea of just how quickly you can build these end-to-end -end applications and connect them to the data sources that you care about. Uh, so with that, that's an introduction with Logic Apps. We'll be showing more today. If you have questions, I'm here uh, for the week, so come visit us at the booth. Uh, but now I actually want to pass it over to Chris Anderson, uh, who's going to come show some end-to-end uh, -end functions um, developer, experience. developer experiences that you can have. So with that, Chris.